Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga. This time we have year 1907 and another internal uh, tournament of Łódź Chess Club. Uh, so the club uh, organized a lot of these tournaments just as a preparation for much stronger international tournaments like Ostende 1907, Karlsbad 1907. Um, we've seen Akiba Rubinstein, you know, I will cover the games on these tournaments as well in the future. This is one of the games during the the, the tournament in Łódź 1907 where Akiba Rubinstein gonna play as white and his opponent Gersh Rotlevi are uh, gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. This time Akiba open with d4. We have d5, c4, e6, queen's gambit declined, knight c3 and now d takes on c4. So accepting this pawn, uh, however it's of course not the gambit. Now in 21st century, just last month, um, I show you the game where Hikaru Nakamura goes for this system. D takes on c4 and he won two games against Magnus Carlsen. So if you haven't seen that games, definitely you should check them out and um, I will leave the link over there and um, and yeah E4 was played by Magnus Carlsen, but here Akiba Rubinstein prefer E3, more solid approach. We have knight F6 and now of course bishop C4, C5 attacking the center, knight F3, knight C6 and now castle by white. We have A6, very common idea, preparing B5, kicking the bishop with tempo and bringing the bishop to B7 on this very strong diagonal. So this is well known idea. We have queen E2. And now in the 21st century, the main line uh, goes as b5, kicking the, the bishop immediately. And after that, bishop b7, bringing the bishop on this diagonal and then rook d1 and the game can continue. Uh, however, here we have c takes on d4, so a little bit more tricky line, but it's still playable. Um, even nowadays, we have a lot of um, games in the database. Rook d1, now pinning the pawn, so uh, pawn cannot advance. Uh, and as Rubinstein uh, tries to create actually to isolated pawn and play with the isolated pawn uh, he wants to also have the support with the with the rook behind we have bishop e7 and now e takes on d4 we have castle uh, and here is the critical idea of akiba rubinstein in this game Usually what nowadays is played and Rubinstein also played it just, you know, five years later um, is d5. So exchange this isolated queen's pawn, getting rid of it and after exchanging everything, uh, then after bishop d5, white has a very nice threat taking on f7 with the attack on the, on the queen. So queen c7 uh, and here in 1912, just five years later after this game, Akiba Rubinstein uh, played bishop g5. So he went for the for the line with immediately d5 and uh, also in 60s for example Smyslov was continuing um, even differently with with the idea of queen e4 putting the pressure on this diagonal uh, trying to mess up the pawn structure on the on the queen side so these are the ideas uh, also some of the players played bishop g5 but still again d5 is the main idea uh, nowadays and also it was you know just a couple of years later but in this particular game Akiba Rubinstein uh, played something rare bishop f4 so this is kind of London bishop it can be very tricky uh, it controls c7 however you know how to get there the knight would love to jump for example to b5 or d5 but both of these squares actually are controlled by the pawns uh, however, it's very tricky uh, move, so it's, it's very important to know that game whenever, you know, play uh, Queen's Gambit, you know, declined as white or as black. Uh, it can be very, very tricky. Magnus Carlsen plays Bishop F4 in many, many systems and sometimes, you know, you don't understand all of the ideas with what could happen because, you know, super grandmasters always uh, play preventing moves. But this game will show, you know, how dangerous it can be. So... 
I will just show you how to react correctly. We have only one game in the database from the 21st century uh, and the correct move is knight b4. Very important move, knight b4 with the idea of blocking this extremely dangerous pawn, okay? So this is what you have to play. Of course, uh, now the knight doesn't control e5 so white can jump over there. Uh, however, then black can play very simple b5 and then after bishop b3, bishop b7 and the game can continue for example a4 knight b to d5 and so on so this pawn is stopped uh, and the game can continue you know if you know how to play against um, the isolated queen's pawn then you know what to do if you you know want to play with isolated queen's pawn you also you know should study the games like this however in this game rotlevi went for immediate b5 b5 kicking the bishop and now believe me or not but this is a blunder this is a blunder in this position uh the move like this you know obvious move obvious continuation can be just bad so you can now you know pause the video and find the winning continuation for white uh while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready it shouldn't be very difficult to, you know, find the move, the first move at least, because, you know, if we didn't have knight b4 to control uh, d5, then of course d5 has to be played. And this is what Akiba Rubinstein played. Very deep understanding of this position. Now, uh, knight b4 obviously is a, is a bad move, because d takes on e6 comes with the, with the attack on the queen, so e takes on f7, and you're gonna lose the exchange in the game, so it doesn't make any sense. Uh, b takes on c4, makes more sense but still white stand pretty good here because after d takes on c6 let's say queen b6 queen c4 white gonna have this very annoying pawn and it's not clear how you gonna you know get out with the bishop probably you have to play something like like a5 but then b5 not gonna be controlled so the knight for example can jump to b5 and support this pawn this pawn can can then advance to c7 and so on very annoying, um, you know, pawn and white definitely has much better gameplay. This is why Rotlevi went for e takes on d5, but now we have a very simple and forced continuation. Bishop d5, knight d5, knight d5, and as you see, the bishop controls c7 and the knight also can jump to c7. And it can be very annoying, especially with the rook on d1. Now, how to react? How to react? It's a very tricky position because now queen e8, you cannot play queen e8 because you're gonna lose the queen. The queen has nowhere to go as the rook controls both of the squares. So uh, that's the, the queen would be trapped. Uh, if you try to escape with the queen, let's say queen a5, then bishop c7 and the queen has, you know, still run. Uh, but then you have knight b6 with the attack on the queen and white gonna win the rook, whole rook. So this is how dangerous um, this position is. So this is why Rotlevi again tried to play something like bishop d7 blocking um, this dangerous discovery. However, after bishop c7, he resigned. He resigned. What a miniature. So can you imagine you have the normal position and then you, you resign after bishop c7. Now, why Rotlevi resign? Uh, obviously, if he plays something like queen c8, he gonna lose the, the whole piece. And because knight e7, knight e7, queen e7, and then, yeah, you can take this bishop, but you're gonna take another one. So, whole piece, so that's, of course, unplayable. Queen e8 would be better, but still, uh, knight b6 and winning the piece or uh, winning the exchange. So, probably better to exchange, so bishop e6, knight a8, queen a8, and the only asset what, what black have is pair of bishops, which can be exchanged immediately, so bishop d6, um, and then simply bishop e7, knight e7. The game, of course, could continue, however, uh, completely symmetrical pawn structure, and white gonna have very comfortable game uh, with extra extra exchange so this is why after bishop c7 rotlevi just couldn't believe didn't want to continue the game and he just resigned 
very interesting and i think it's uh, it's good to know you know this continuation especially if you go for the queen's gambit declined as white as black um, and so on so if you like this video press a like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and press subscribe if you don't want to see another you know rubinstein's video or you know the new tour tournaments as well press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one